Aaron, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for, for joining us uh, this evening uh, in this uh, edition of La Casa del Vecino, our neighbor's house. Um, as you know, as a non-profit organization, Liga, we have been concentrating mostly on promoting uh, emerging Latin American architects. Uh, but now we're taking this specific sidestep and looking as well what's happening on the other side of the of the border and looking at, at these residential projects in the US. Mm -hmm. You are the fourth uh, in a series of, uh, so almost the last, in a series of five uh, 30 minutes conversations. Next week, we'll have the last one with uh, Paul Anderson, who will mm -hmm. talk about this mother house in Denver, in Denver, mm -hmm. Colorado. Uh, before we start, we'd like to thank enormously Panel Array. You see in the top right corner uh, uh, our sponsor for making this project, this program happen. And we'd like to welcome the people as well that are joining us through the network of Arkina and uh, Mextropolis, their, their streaming channels. So, uh, Sharon, thank you so much for willing to do oh, this. So it's uh, to super here. kind, and I really see it as a support. Uh, I've always received from you guys for to, towards Liga. Uh, I have a feeling I know your work since ever. I think mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I also lived in LA for seven years. So I've had mm -hmm. a chance to meet up sometimes to to get to know each other's uh, office or your kids. Uh, you've been participating in the MOS, uh, in the sorry, in the Orders Hundreds program mm -hmm. as well. No, mm -hmm. where uh, Michael Merritt of MOS was there as well. Mm -hmm. he reminded me last week. Uh, Johnson Mark Lee has beaten Productora in competitions, and you have also invited us as curators to the Chicago Architectural Biennial. Biennial. Uh, and, and so it's, it's a pleasure to, to have this conversation about what for me is a very, very specific, uh, uh, a really interesting project, uh, the Vault House. Mm -hmm. um, and the last thing that I remember as well, uh, Mark uh, at a certain moment also, also wrote a text for Liga for the exhibition of Diego Arraigado, the That's Argentinian right. architect. Yeah. Uh -huh. You yeah. did the house together in a, in Argentina. Okay. So a lot of connections uh, and, and I really would like to present the house to, to my public and I'm going to give you the floor to start talking a bit about the general idea of that, uh, of that building. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. It's really a pleasure to be here. And I feel like this, this conversation series is really in the spirit of how we all sort of practice and share ideas and curate, curate projects. And, and I feel like that um, you know, speaks to something about our kind of loose generation of architects. So mm -hmm. it's really good, the work that you guys do at Liga and, and all. So happy to be here tonight. Thank you. So um, for those who don't know it, can you guide us a little bit through the basic uh, yeah, please. ideas? Arturo, and, can you bring up some images? Yeah, thank you so much. Super. So you can go to the next the next slide, Arturo. Um, so I'm, tonight I'm going to talk about a little bit about the Vault House, which uh, was finished in around 2013, um, and it's it's in a plot in Oxnard, which is about an hour north of Los Angeles, and it's um, a particular. You can go to the next slide. It's obviously on the beach, and um, what's kind of special about this particular parcel is that it's it's very long and narrow, so it's 40 feet wide in total and 120 feet long. So it's a kind of exceptional proportion. And the other thing about it is that on the north side of the house, it had a weird sort of setback. And so we're 15 feet, um, we can extend 15 feet out further than our neighbor. So I think the, the kind of first things that um, became kind of conditions for us is addressing this long and narrow site which we which we do by adding a courtyard which is that square that you can see um, in the middle of the bar and then also capitalizing on this kind of not totally symmetrical shotgun but this long um the long narrow house that has this sort of appendage that offers a view to the north um, and this was for a family who was a couple and they had their daughters were sort of starting college and but they're quite a social group and so um, if you could go to the next slide the idea that we generated with um, with our clients was to think about a, the house as a collection of rooms and um, on the one hand we had a very tight envelope um, which which is maximized in the project then represented through this rectangular um, plexi box and the idea of this collection of rooms that are all oriented in the same direction which is in the east-west um, orientation towards the ocean was that you could be in sort of any room in the house and have views and light and air and such all the way through. So it could sort of open and close a little bit like um, like a kaleidoscope. And in the next mm -hmm. slide, you can see how 
they're all sort of packed together and oriented in that way. And to a large extent, we, in this planning idea, we eliminated the sort of service spaces that you typically see in a house like corridors and such so that there, there ends up being a lot of contact between the rooms and less of those sort of threshold spaces that you might normally see that create privacy and, and a more traditional house, house plan. Um, and the next image diagram, it sort of captures this idea we had about, you know, it's very much a response to the climate, to the view, um, so that not only is the view drawn all the way through those 140 feet, um, but the, the, the rooms that are furthest away from the view are the, the guest bedrooms. But even from those rooms, you have that view, you also have light and air passing through the house that's amplified by having a courtyard void halfway through that 140 feet. Um, and the next slide, I think, captures um, this book has sort of been a bit of a Bible for us, especially for our work here in Southern California. And Bannum talks about in this book the, the four ecologies of Southern California, which are, you know, of course, um, the beach, the plains, the sort of suburbia, the foothills, um, so the hillside, the hillside um, topography, and then also autotopia. And so I think for us, the project was interesting because it we were really trying to take on the beach house, which is of course, a sort of canonical landscape of Southern California, but in a way, a sort of under-examined type. And so I think for, for, for us, we thought about, um, if you could go to the next, the next slide, in a way, it's a sort of hybrid of a kind of shotgun house, a sort of long, narrow um, residential typology with, um, with, with a kind of courtyard. And so the two of those together for us were sort of encapsulated in this collage, which, which you know, Bonnie, is sort of a, a language of, of, of representation that we've explored where by, you know, just distilling the idea of this plinth that hovers over the landscape and that the rooftop of Casa Malaparte just hovering over mm -hmm. um, the landscape um, and the horizon of the Pacific Ocean somehow is this sort of volu volumetric expression that sits on this raised ground is really the um, mm. kind of essential expression we see of the house. I maybe later want to come back to this idea of how you work with collage and that, that relation to history, because of course I immediately recognize the, the Malaparte. Um, when I moved to LA, I was super surprised by these beach houses, uh -huh. how like the, the, the shotgun quality of it, you know, yeah. like you see them all uh, uh, next to the highway, especially when you drive up uh, through above, um, uh, north from oh, yeah, from LA, yeah. uh -huh, all the Pacific Coast mm -hmm. Highway. Uh, it's really this urban setting, and and uh, it's strange when when I think of the beach house, you don't immediately think of such a such a shotgun uh, right. setting, you know, with these houses like almost row houses one next to the other. Uh, and so when we've been doing this program about uh, the, the American the American houses, the, the, the one often thinks of this banal plot of a sort of yeah. suburban setting. Um, but in your case, it's it's something very different. It's a beach quality, but it also has this urban quality of the of the house, and of course, it has the ocean right in front of it. Can you talk right. a little bit more about that uh, relation, or how the yeah. project relates? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's it's right that it is really shocking how you know, given the sort of extremities of the beach on one side and the road or the highway on the other, that the sort of normal the normal planning of these shotgun beach houses, and that was sort of a starting point. So if you could go to the next slide, Arturo. Um, a there were a couple sort of other conditions that were really specific to this beach and every beach is very different depending on its landscape and width and kind of where it sits along the California coast. But one of the other exceptions here was that we're in a tsunami zone. And so we had to raise the mm -hmm. house. Um, I mean, it's a kind of cal complex calculation, but the reason it's raised up is to address the tsunami zone so that the water can flow underneath. And then if you'll see in the in the subsequent slides that it sits back on the on the wet on the east side so that you can have the garage at grade. But all of the construction on that east side is made of breakout walls. So if there is a major tidal event, all the ground floor at grade walls just collapse. Um, not of course the structure, but that that was a sort of another eccentricity of the parcel. And then I think also the narrowness of it, that because it was so narrow. We started carving out things like this that you see on the left side of the building, which is no, where a visitor would come. Yeah, yeah, that sort of carve out so that, you know, besides the shotgun inside the planning, just how you approach these houses is often very unceremonial, just kind of in a five foot setback between you and your neighbor. So carving that out, trying to create 
an in-between space um, as a circulation zone. And then um, if you could go to the next slide. Um, so you can see how that, that raised bit, which is often a very kind of undesigned, I mean, all of these houses are built on piles, so it's driven piles into the sand and then they're raised. But for us, we felt like because the sand topography changes a lot with different um, throughout the year, that we felt that lands that was also a kind of very visible landscape of the house. So we brought that framing and that sort of spatial language all the way through the section into that um, kind of tsunami zone as well. And then I think finally in the in the last slide here, and um, what what the other kind of way that we address this problem of the shotgun, as I mentioned really briefly, was introducing a courtyard. So in the top image on the long elevation, that upside down vault is um, capturing an open space in the middle of the house. And I think that was really important to bring light into the whole building. So like the master bedroom sits between that courtyard and the living room. So really from every zone of the of the interior, you you have a connection to, to natural light and air and you don't, that, that shotgunness is um, sort of offset by how the building works in section. Mm -hmm. uh You've talked about a lot of things now, but not maybe the where, why the building got the name the Vault House. No, yeah. that's of course like how did you uh, where did your inter interest to start working with the vaults come from in this in this project? Yeah, I think that it came from. I mean, as I showed in the first couple of images, um, that trying to find a kind of single integer of a room that could be multiplied, and and while it's the contour, the kind of profile of the vault is different in pretty much every room. It somehow created a something that unified them as a collection. And so if you could go to the next slide, um, what then, I mean, so it, it came from, you know, both a little bit of a kind of nod to um, this sort of Spanish, kind of pseudo Spanish style houses that are somewhat in this, in this neighborhood, but across Southern California, we're also thinking about like Irving Gill and the, 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 the tilt up walls of Irving Gill and how he used um, the arch. So the arch is really more of the kind of historic lineage, but we were interested in extending that as a volume. So turning the vault, the arch into a vault. So a unit of, of, of a volumetric space. Um, and so, you know, what you can see here when we started playing with that, we really set that rule and then we, we decided that it, our goal was not to kind of smooth out the moments of intersection between them, but but so sometimes like on the upper upper left, not the the leftmost image, but one to the right of of that, sometimes it's sort of like occluded. They're 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 kind of a occluded relationship where they sort of telescope in, and then other other areas like the upper right image on that top um, band where it's a little bit more of an awkward intersection. And we, we just set a rule for ourselves, we weren't gonna really calibrate that, that we would let those play and that would be part of the language of the house. Mm -hmm. Certainly like in the next, you know, we're looking at a lot of, as you know, I mean, looking historically at, at other precedent and Maison Jaou was, 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 was really spatially a precedent that we've always been sort of fascinated with. I mean, here the tectonics are quite different. So for us, it, the sort of volumetric of, of this house and the kind of orientation was important, but, um, you know, I think we'll talk about it in a minute, but, you know, one of the, I think something that, especially in these early house projects that has been always um, a kind of attribute of our kind of design input is really thinking about methods of construction, especially in, in America, which are really in a way quite crude. And so thinking about the difference between the sort of tectonics of how you build the house and the kind of spatial landscape is something mm -hmm. that um, perhaps is a point of departure from from Jaou, but 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 the kind of spatial effects we, we find some relationship with mm -hmm. um, well that that brings me uh, that's really a good segue to, to my next question mm -hmm. because um, I don't know I think you once told me that we when you explain this project and when you lecture in Italy or mm -hmm. something that uh, people uh, really cannot understand it. They, for them, yeah. the vault is a bearing structure, and doesn't make sense for them at all to not yeah. have it any any structural uh, logical. In the end, right. the vaults you you made are made out of drywall, I guess, and of, mm -hmm. of, of uh, and uh, I think the same thing happens for a lot of our public, uh, our Latin American public you now mm -hmm. uh, listening in. I heard there's a, I see that there's an issue and that you should follow it on Facebook, seemingly not on YouTube. There was a mm. problem with the presentation. Um, but the material and tectonic expression is, of course, also really key to the yeah. development of modern and also contemporary Latin American mm -hmm. architecture, mm -hmm. I think. 
Um, but in the US, like key uh, architects, makers, thinkers, like from Hayduk to Eisenman, mm -hmm. and certainly Frank Gehry, uh, mm -hmm. they have kind of demystified or, 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 or taken away that importance of the role as uh, the structure as a guiding principle to right. organize architecture, no? right. like in a very provocative way, I would say. Uh, so, so, of course, I read the arches in your house, uh, mm -hmm. not a structure, as they are not structure. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you show that you kind of throw some of the arches, you throw them upside down in the facade right. to just right. give the visitor already an idea, like, hey, this is not this is not structural. This is right. a this is a geometry. This is not right. a structural system. Um, and 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 in another one, you cut even some of the legs off. You know, it comes mm -hmm. down, it it goes exactly. back off. Uh, like exactly. I think these these are kind of these moments where you you try to inform our our our, our the yeah the, the visitor that of your game uh, of your play um and, and that reminds me like in a conversation we had like many years ago in in a, in a when we were doing a, a conversation for plot magazine in mm -hmm. argentina and you said uh, that you didn't see geometry as a structural system but rather as a system to define architectural intentions you mm -hmm. know and you said we use geometry with an opportunistic attitude rather than with a moralistic one Mm -hmm. And I find I find that really interesting, uh, like to say to see that not as a moral problem, but as mm -hmm. a formal problem and, and a sort of provocation as well. Mm -hmm. No, can, mm -hmm. can you speak to that idea of, of working with 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 the vault? Yeah, yeah. And maybe Arthur, we can just go through a couple of images. Um, um, well, where you can flip through a few of these, um, but that just so folks are oriented. But I think it's I think it's really right. And one thing, Bonnie, that you know, when we really started our practice, Mark had just come back. You can advance um, a few more. Um, he'd just come back from four or five years in Switzerland. And you know, the sort of precision of construction mm -hmm. was probably it doesn't get much higher than that. Um, you can you can um, advance again. And you know, I think when we started our practice with very sort of like prosaic projects, I, I think we, um, I mean, certainly following in the lineage of, of, of Gary, among others, that, you know, really addressing the, the idea that, that, that how a building is built and what it's kind of spatial and formal geometry, those things could be disconnected, but we just didn't mm -hmm. have the kind of budgets and the calibration and the, and, you know, at the same time, we have very pretty strict seismic codes that we felt kind of liberated to one, not, to try to embrace the sort of, in a way, um, not maybe crudeness, but 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 chunkiness and lack of precision in American construction as a kind of method of working. Um, and you could you could go ahead again in the slides. In a sense that you need something to 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 finish afterwards. That yeah, you can and structure way, uh -huh. yeah, it's like there's the order of structure, the the steel, the framing, and all that stuff, and then there's the order of the envelope. Those are two different mm, things. Exactly. And, uh -huh. You know, I think um, we we think about this sort of um, you know, almost like this 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 image of like the spacesuit, where sometimes the skin and the body are very tight, and other times they sort of inflate to absorb infrastructure and 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 cheap structure in a way. Um, so I think if if we could advance maybe just a couple more slides um, again, I think some of these like these images really capture it, where that sort of thickness of that upside down vault, which absorbs um, the moment frame, so or actually the lack of moment frame. So what ended up happening in the house is that we maximized the envelope of this rectangular form and section. And instead of spending money on expensive moment frames, which are, you know, would just be square, we use diagonal bracing. We use that poche for mechanical, electrical, um, all of the stuff that we can put in that, that kind of poche space, the gap between structure and envelope. And that becomes a kind of, um, yeah, I think we're very opportunistic about that. So yeah. that- So you allow this, you allow this thickness, you know? Like, yeah. Well, it's all about making things as thin as possible. Yeah. Like this uh, uh, yeah. say, refined architecture. Right. Um, here's that, right. that mass. I mean, it's, it's really true what you say, because we have the same problem. For example, when we work in, in, in Mexico or work in the US, we have to put a completely different, uh, uh, we have to use a completely different approach because, of course, the, the, the structural expression, I mean, yeah. you depend much more on the finish, no? On yeah. that. On that uh, mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, I, I included, we almost never show these, but um, in a couple of slides, you'll see some uh, an, an image of how the, how the construction of the house. And it's all, it's basically a little bit of steel and mostly timber. And, um, you know, you can see how moment frames are sandwiched in there. Um, 
But I think it's that um, even the windows, I mean, there's no curved windows. It's all very normative um, gridded construction panels that, um, that then just slip in in the gaps between like this thick envelope and um, the frame of structure. Mm -hmm. so Can we go slide. forward, uh, yeah. Dora? I'm curious. Right, yeah. Uh, that, yeah. Oh, wow. So that's that slide where we use like that moment frame, um, which you can see that cross um, becomes a place where that's the master bathroom. So there's no view um, and you can start to see how, like, like, as you say, there's moments where it's obviously not a load bearing vault, but here the, the, the division between the kitchen and the, and the circulation and sort of dining area is just used through a kind of truncated vault that, that's um, accentuated through how we use lighting um, so it is a bit promiscuous in that way, but I think it um, is also very, you know, I think something that our clients have talked about living in this house, that it's incredibly, um, it's it's a house that is very, um, there's a kind of very, high, it's highly functional. I mean, the vaults are also acoustic. They amplify light in a way. The courtyard is a space that is a kind of still cli space climatically versus the the west side of the house, which is quite windy. So I think the system, it seemed, you know, it, it, there's a lot of problem solving, yet it has a kind of formal um, kind of ambition and directness at the same time, which is, I think we often work with those sort of contradictory forces in our, in the development of our projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that brings me to another thing. And I don't know if we can see that on more finished pictures. I don't know if the next yeah, yeah, pictures, yeah. but uh, as absolute uh, cleanness and, and smoothness, you know, mm -hmm. like the, um, reminds me a little bit of one of the first Toda projects, a house in Chihuahua we did. And in the end, by, by wrapping everything in a sort of white bituminous roofing and, right. and by kind of avoiding everything like downspouts and yeah. all of a sudden it becomes much more, uh, much less, much, much less um, architecture and much mm -hmm. more like sort of a, a, a model or something. Mm -hmm. It becomes mm -hmm. actually really close to what you make to study your architectural right. objects. Right. And I, uh, uh, at least in our case, I thought that's sort of clumsiness. We didn't know how to how to go from a paper model or uh -huh. cardboard or a museum board model to to a building. Mm -hmm. uh, we did, and so everything we saw in that model, we tried to we try to kind of uh, uh, realize. Right. You know? Like so, so all these things like uh, construction joints or uh, metal flashings, we try to get rid of them. Uh, making it as close as possible to 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 the, to the model. Right. These spaces as well, they look like precise uh, rhino drawings or something. Uh -huh. uh, can you speak I mean, to that? To that? Yeah, yeah. I think it you know it comes yeah. from maybe two different directions. And you know, one on the one hand, it's a very sort of prosaic problem, which is this is at the beach, and so it's a pretty extreme climate to build you know to build buildings. It's really really wet and really really salty. And so it was a very pragmatic decision, like to have as few details as possible, because wherever you have a detail, wherever you have exposed metal, you it's have corrosion. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, there's kind of a lot of elaborate kind of cl cleaning systems in the building and evacuation carpeting, car vacuum systems. And so it came from that. And then, of course, it came from, um, you know, trying to trying to think about the interior and the exterior as sort of as continuous as possible spatially so that you didn't see those traditional shifts in materials and such that you mm -hmm. might see in a more more traditional house. Um, and I think these these are images from the work of Jack Pearson. Um, and this these were images from our book, um, a House is a House. And mm -hmm. you know, I think I just wanted to include these because I, certainly he's taking that to an extreme where just by framing silhouettes of the house, it just starts to feel more like a landscape, the kind of you know, everydayness of this building as a house sort of disappears and it just becomes kind of fragments um, in, 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 in profiles and silhouettes that are part of this landscape of the beach. And I, I think that that, you know, that's also um, how we try to situate our work um, at those different levels of dialogue and exchange is also a really important part of, you know, how we try to recontextualize our work back into a collection of other projects. And part of how we have done that historically is like through House as a House, um, where we invited artists to come and document the works. So we had no, um, besides, besides um, inviting the artists, there was no editorial uh, agenda on our part. And so we find this process of sort of building projects and then having, having artists 
represent them to us is a really it's a kind of extends that feedback loop of mm-hmm. design development and um and you know it's become both like with the collage i think that's another mode of in a way kind of recreating a new frame to see the work again uh is kind of a a, a key part of how we uh, both publish the work but also look back at the work and find relationships between projects Mm. Kind of historically within our own practice. These are from um, another another presentation by um, Torbjorn Roland, um, which he, where he created this sort of fictitious, strange crime scene um, with the vault house as the sort of um, I don't know uh, side of side of side of the crime. Um, so yeah, I think that that um, idea of seeing the work um through through other through other artists hands is 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 a key is a key practice that we um i was also i was always curious when i first saw images of the house of course in the main living room there's this huge sculpture right and since the house is so uh, immaterial one way or another mm-hmm. like so model like you mm-hmm. know like and all of a sudden when you saw the sculpture which also looks like with the from at first glance, a bit like yeah. a sort of model scale a picture, mm-hmm. it gave a sort of very awkward, uh, very um, nice. yeah, confusion of that di- exactly confusion uh-huh. of dimensions and and uh, and that's that's a work that uh, you 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 decided with clients, so that's something that the clients had. Cl- it was in the house, and you know we there was no moving that thing, so that um, so that stayed. I will confess that it's actually quite colorful in its in its reality. So we did photo. <laughs> <laughs> so wait a minute. So the thing was already in the house when you start. Uh... No, no. But when we took the photographs, it was already there. Okay. So okay, there's okay, of course okay. obviously some editorial, some editing out here of furniture uh-huh. that we that we um, relocated for the photographs. But that piece. Uh, that's was, interesting. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> so um, if you if you. Um, I might want to come back to the to the to the, to the topic of the of the collage, but yeah, uh, I asked you as well, like, how does, does this project relate to several other works of uh, of uh, John de Mark Lee? Now, of your practice, uh, very different architects have different relations to the to the residential project. Yeah, some is kind of a sort of continuous core of their practice, mm-hmm. uh, although nobody really would like that. <laughs> we would all like to do complex public buildings, mm-hmm. but it becomes a sort of Continuous exercise uh, that mm-hmm. that that's a sort of uh, yeah probably a lot of times one of the only constant kind of repeated exercises on the right. on the drawing board. So how do you, how is this house related to the rest of the of the of the practice or the work of uh, of, of John Stomart? Yeah, I think you know it's true that I mean we we certainly especially in Southern California we started our practice working on small residential projects, but. You know, I think we've we've conti- we do less of them, but we continue to find them really important. Um, you know, scales of research, and we we had this interesting moment once we were interviewing for something a kind of big interior project at LAX, the airport here in LA, and we were sort of wondering why this Virgin Atlantic airline airline company wanted to talk to us, and they said that they felt that if you you know were well well trained and understood how to design a house that you could design anything like the kind mm, of and designing a space this was an airport lounge and so the sort of comfort of home um, and the intimacy of a domestic space they saw is relevant for for this this kind of lounge environment and i think we've really taken that to heart i think um it sounds we, like you you interviewed them instead of yeah, yeah, but, I mean, you know, this <laughs> idea that you know to feel um the kind of generosity and comfort one wants to feel in a concert hall or a museum or a house. I mean, I think we're all humans. We, we, we really strive for those qualities that, you know, you can be in a hall of a public space and be one or two people and still feel a sense of comfort. And I, I think for us, we feel the training of, of thinking about the, the domestic space is, is how we sort of keep that, keep that intensity and the connection to, um, to, to, to kind of how a person, human feels in a space. And I mean, I think the last couple slides are are looking at, um, besides her, um, she's part of that. Um, Artist. Event. Uh-huh. Um, but um, I think that, you know, there's a body of work that while we're doing less of these smaller buildings that we, um, that we find this kind of small scale, um, kind of singular object buildings that begin to sort of multiply and become a little bit more urban, a little bit more, engaged in the public realm that 
they're, they're still really important to us. They, um, you know, we, we think a lot about one of the things that I think is important about the vault house that I didn't really speak about. You could, you could keep, keep advancing, um, was the kind of bit of a radical disjunction between the envelope and the, the, print, the kind of form of the house on the exterior and the form of the house on the interior. And mm -hmm. I think in all of our work, there's a bit of a tension between that expression, the sort of interest in maintaining a little bit of a sort of gentlewoman-like presence on the street. I mean, it certainly comes from Lowe's, but, um, and then perhaps more formal ambition um, on the interior. And so a lot of the projects, you know, there is a kind of poche, there's a kind of difference between the interior formal expression of the house and the exterior. And I think that these smaller projects um, have all explored that. I think so questions about apertures, kind of thick and thin walls, um, how to deal with natural light have really been, you know, the residential projects have been a place um, of a lot of study of those things. This is your house in Argentina. For yeah, that we did with, with Diego. With, with Diego. Diego. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, maybe a last question. You always use as sort of the, the the referential image for each project. I don't know mm -hmm. if you if you generate one or, but one becomes for me always the canonical image mm -hmm. uh, of your of your project. They're represented with these collages, and they always incorporate uh, the, uh, um, emblematic uh, mm -hmm. modern or pre-modern architecture mm -hmm. uh, as that collage, which. One would say it's a bit tricky thing to do in the end, you know, because mm -hmm. you kind of relate your work to a specific work work out of, out of history. Mm -hmm. uh, can you speak a little bit to that? Why? why? Because it, I find it very un-American in, in a sense, like especially um, uh, where, where there's a lot of uh, emphasis on innovation, on mm -hmm. kind of and uh, that very specific uh, um, yeah connection. Mm -hmm. uh, I find it really interesting in the way you you you, you played it in all your collages. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I think the very first one we made was was really early in our practice, and we were submitting the the Hill House um, for an mm -hmm. award, and it had not been built yet. And we were trying to really distill the kind of essence of the house. That's the kind of where we took the famous um, Julia Schulman image of Case Style House. And, yeah, and you know, for us, it helped us distill the kind of essential conditions there, which were the kind of house with a distant view um, of the horizon and this sort of suspension, this corner window that sits over that view. And, you know, we, I, I think it was also important that we were, you know, I mean, it certainly relates, of course, to our interest in history and that somehow creating that dialogue with these um, cannot, I mean, they, the first images were always using photographs, you know, not always Shulman, but largely Shulman, that referenced other works of architecture. I mean, the vault, the, the view, the vault house is obviously from from a film, but um, I think we were we were interested in creating a kind of dialogue with those projects his, through history. And you know, we we of course have had to subsequently like you know produce renderings as part of our project um, kind of lexicon, but we're really resisting that in the early part of our practice. And so we were using these collages as a way to. Um, you know, expand the sort of discourse around the project, uh, mm -hmm. especially the single family houses, which are so such a signature part of Southern California's architectural lineage. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Sharon. Uh, it's been lovely to talk to you. So it's yeah. been really great also to see these other images of the vault house, like the, the, the structural images Excellent. and stuff, which things that are, uh, I haven't seen, I've seen less. Uh, I want to invite everybody uh, next week for our last uh, session uh, with The Mother House uh, by Paul Anderson by Independent Architecture in uh, Denver, Colorado. I want to thank again Panel Ray and I want to apologize to all my friends that I seemingly sent a wrong link or something was wrong with <laughs> YouTube. I don't know. Uh, but uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening in and uh, see you soon, Sharon. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. See you guys. Take care. Bye. Bye.